What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. This is the show where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the last week. We've got a bunch of topics this week. Hit the like button and let's jump into them. First, let's talk about a new product from Bauhaus RC. This is a CNC aluminum steering rack for the Element IFS kit. This is made to improve or correct the steering geometry on that Element IFS kit to make everything just line up and run a little bit more parallel with the different linkages, hopefully correcting any of the you know bump steer or anything like that that you could see from that system out of the box. This is made out of CNC aluminum. It's not 3D printed, which Bauhaus is normally known for, but this is an actual CNC aluminum option and it looks like it's available now. I'll link to it in the description below where you can go find it on their website and pick one of these up. Next, let's jump into a few new releases from ProLine. First one is the Big Daddy Drag Tires. We touched on this last week just a little bit, but we got all the details this week. Now, this is a 25% wider rear tire option for no prep drag racing, or I guess drag racing in general, but no prep seems to be where the focus is most of the time. This is a little bit wider to try and give you more surface area, a little bit more traction on un prepped surfaces. Still unsure exactly how this will affect clearances on different bodies or if it will be a fairly universal fit. But if you'd like to either add another tuning option to your toolbox or you just think that your surface would benefit from a little bit more traction, then maybe these will be worth a shot. These are a non-belted option, so they're more like the Hoosier versions than the Reaction. If you're interested in trying these out, I'll link to them in the description below. And there is a Harley Designs discount code that you can use on the Pro website and if you use that it gives me a few points of credit over there so if you want to keep me rolling on crawlers on all my vehicles punch it in or as always you can pick it up from any of the ProLine dealers that you normally shop with then ProLine also released all of the details on their new active backpack this is a fairly unique looking backpack it's not just a normal you know kind of run-of-the-mill backpack it's got a little bit different design and it is made to fit like RC buggies or small RCs, it says. So don't know that it will fit a scale truck. I don't think that that is the market that this thing is being targeted for. For me, usually putting a car inside of a backpack is a little less ideal than like strapping it on the back where I'm not gonna just collect all of the dirt on the inside, but maybe buggies are cleaner or something, I don't know. Either way, it's a pretty good looking backpack and the price isn't bad at all. The backpack has all the typical storage solutions, laptop pocket, main pocket, elastic pockets on the outside, pockets for other pockets and within pockets. So maybe not the best fit for all of us, but some of you guys, this may be right up your alley. And then we also saw the full release of the new ProLine Crestline wheels. These are again, the same design as their previous impulse wheel, just with a new wheel face. It is the aluminum composite combo where it's got a machined aluminum wheel face and then a plastic molded rear half of the wheel. It does have the compatible hub system on there so you can adjust it as needed. These are available now. You can check those out. Pricing and availability all listed on the ProLine website already. Next, Kyosho has released the new Jeep JL version of their Mini Z platform. The Mini Z platform is one of the more that style first, hard body, you know, lots of details, lights, very accurate stock proportions and everything like that. Not as much aimed exactly at the uh, performance SCX24 and Duro24 market. So it's a different buyer. They are pretty expensive as well for this market with what they're going after. But if you're a Jeep fan and you really like the scale style that these offer with the hard body especially, then a great fit and done really well. These are popping up for pre-order now and I believe they're scheduled to land pretty quickly. So jump in on that if you're looking to add one to maybe match your full size version. The next I want to talk about a giveaway at cruisergear.co. They are doing a giveaway where every dollar you spend on their website, you get two tickets to enter into the raffle to win a full size FJ62, I believe. Looks awesome. And alongside of that, Matt from the Scale Builders Guild made a miniature version of it. A 3D printed hard body that was sanded and filled, painted, looks great it's on a long wheelbase tf2 that was stretched a little bit further and matt again did a full bill on this thing and it looks fantastic and the winner of this awesome full size is going to also get 
the miniature version. So if you're interested in that, you can go shop on their website. It's mainly Toyota stuff, as you can kind of gather from the name, but I picked up myself a shirt that is a fairly generic, like build wheel break shirt. Doesn't have anything to do with Toyotas at least, so I was fine with buying it. But you can check that out. There's only about a week left in the raffles. If you're interested in throwing your name in that hat to try and win those two vehicles, get in on that. I'll link to their store in the description below. The GoPro Hero 9 came out last week. And while it's not exactly RC related, they did use RC in the actual promo vehicles. They sent little cheapy RC kind of like knockoff wraiths to some of the influencers that ended up doing videos with them. But not the reason that I was covering it. The actual GoPro Hero 9 has some pretty awesome specs. I decided to pick one of those up. I use GoPros a lot. I have sixes and sevens mainly. I didn't buy the eight, but the nine had a number of nice updates in it that made me pull the trigger. It's got front facing screen, which is nice, even though the GoPro's wide angle, you don't really need it, but a little bit bigger to get a little bit more battery in there. It's got amazing stabilization, just like the last versions, but even better. Then it's got some like horizontal lock stuff. So if you do mount it in a vehicle, it'll actually keep the horizon for you and the vehicle will kind of rotate under it. Just overall, some really cool features there. GoPros are what I use a lot when I go do like vlogging stuff. And I think that this is going to just be a really great camera. Really looking forward to getting it. Hopefully I have it here in the next few days. I've got a video to release next Monday that I would really like to have it for. If you're a camera geek or like to film stuff, or maybe just thinking about getting into it, this one, one I'm pretty excited for myself. Then last week we talked about the WPL key truck or K cars, key trucks. Looks like they say both ways. And I told you I ordered one and mine came already. It's even cooler than I actually expected. I bought this direct from WPL. I paid full price. I wasn't given it or anything like that. They're really inexpensive, but you can also get them through with some like package deals on Banggood. And I think they're even cheaper there. I think they're like 63 bucks and shipping's cheaper. So if you're interested in that, you can pick one of these things up, but they're just cool. Like the body is of decent quality. It's got kind of a cool style. The drivetrain is just super cheap. You can tell uh, it's two wheel drive, rear wheel drive only. It's leaf sprung, but they actually work pretty well. Independent front suspension. Tires are super narrow. The wheels are super scale. I've got the battery charging right now for it. Haven't driven it yet, but looking forward to see uh, what it does or how little it does. But just thought I'd let you guys know that, you know, for the money, I'm not disappointed. I think that a functional lawnmower is going to have to be a must for the back of this thing. I'll link to where I got mine from WPL Direct, or you can check out like Banggood, like I was saying, where they have some package deals for these. Speaking of Banggood, that's where I got this little thing, which was the Flamingo. It's another three-wheeler oddball RC, but I did a review on this thing on Sunday. Got that posted up. Again, another one of these just ridiculous little RCs. That was a lot of fun. I'll link below to the video that I did on this, as well as I'll link where you can actually buy them if you're interested. But overall, I was way more impressed than I thought I would be. Even once I just got it and saw the build quality in my hand, I've never owned anything from X Rider, but they do have a cafe racer coming out. We touched on probably like a year ago that still isn't out yet, but maybe it's coming out soon. But either way, my first experience with that brand in general, not too bad. So another one that I would recommend. On Sunday, I do live streams going over 3D modeling projects, kind of walking you through the steps of different things. Last weekend, I designed up a toolbox that you can 3D print for your scale garage if you'd like. And again, I put out those files for free on my Thingiverse. You can download them 3D print if you'd like, or you can watch the video and kind of go through the steps that I went through to create your own. Either way, if you're looking to learn some CAD or just want to 3D print your own toolbox, there's a couple of things for you to look at. In those live streams, I do use Fusion 360 and another topic that came up last week is that Fusion 360 is making a number of changes to the personal plan that is very common for people in the RC industry to use to create their own parts. Now it's going to take and knock down a limit on the number of files that you can use to only 10. So if you're someone who draws a lot of items, then what you're going to have to do is only have a certain number of active files and you have to kind of archive them to allow you to keep making new ones. It's not a big deal. You can save them on your computer itself, but it's also taking away some, you know, export options and things like that. In the end, I think it's still going to work well for most people in RC creating their own scale accessories and things like that. You're just going to have to, you know, work on a project, save it out, keep your STLs, work on them from there. And then you can just, 
you know, save the projects out. I think you'll be able to bring them back in by archiving others, but you're gonna have to kind of do a little bit of your own file management in that way. Fusion 360 is still a really powerful program and even with the free personal use license that they're going to give now, still worth it to use. I think it's still the best option of the free ones available as far as power and just with the modeling style that it uses. If you wanna actually purchase the program, I think it's about $300 right now on sale for a year. If you're really into creating 3D parts, then 300 bucks probably worth it, but it is a yearly cost. So you're gonna to have to pay it every year or monthly as they have it now. Those changes will be going into effect on October 1st, so it's just around the corner. If you wanna export some of the files that you have now into files that you can use in other programs like a STEP or an IGES file, I suggest doing that before the deadline. And lastly, for my videos for this week, this coming Friday, we've got another Friday Night Live where we build a new kit just about every Friday. This week, I'll be doing a two-wheeler, a new one-fifth scale motorcycle. The last motorcycle kit I built was like the Kyosho Hang-On Rider for ever ago. So kind of looking forward to putting together this one fifth scale piece. You can come check that out. Streams start at 6 p.m. Pacific time every Friday. Come hang out, see what we got going on. Always awesome to have the crowd. That's going to do it for the news topics this week. However, for this week's question, being that we talked about that three-wheeler flamingo, the little key truck, and even the motorcycle, weird or oddball RCs are just are one of my favorite things. Absolutely love them. That's the dancing rider, obviously one of my favorites. For this week, I wanted to put out there, do you guys remember any other oddball RCs that I'm missing? Maybe I should either hunt down or maybe that are still available. Drop them in the comments below. Would love to try and find if I'm missing any or if there's some that were out there before that maybe I missed or that I should really try and look for. And do you own any of the oddball ones? You know, like the dancing rider, the even the, some of the hovercrafts are kind of crazy. I feel like some of the six by sixes are just like kind of right on the edge of a weird RC, but I know there's gotta be some that I'm missing. So let me know, put them in the comments below. Always one of my favorite parts of the week. We're closing in on 50,000 subscribers. I think we'll be there around the end of the month. So I've got a lot of work to do on that giveaway build by then. So don't forget to go enter that. Make sure you're subscribed as always. I appreciate you guys spending Tuesdays here with me. Thanks as always for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.